you are watching Kolsky One. Like, share, and subscribe. Hi, welcome back to Kolsky One. So, by the title, you'll know what I bought. So, I bought the Radio Master TX16S, and I bought the version that comes with the Crossfire. So, we'll show you that in a minute. But it comes in three versions. They do a normal version, which doesn't have the metal scroll wheel or the touch screen. And then they do a normal version which has the touchscreen Hall Effects and the metal wheel. Then they do the version I've got which was 220 I think from the UK. And the main reason I bought it is I wanted to try Crossfire out because I never have. So I bought the Radio Master because I wanted the Crossfire tackle that comes with it. So it comes with the unit itself on the back. You get. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's show you that in a minute. So the other part of doing this video is I obviously own this. I reviewed this the other day. And I compared it to the Dumper T16 that I used to own. And but I have watched hundreds of videos since, or not hundreds, but quite a lot of videos that people have been sent this to review and saying this is so much better than this. So it's a little bit conf this is the thing that kind of confuses me because I don't really understand why. So just bear with me one second. I'm just going to pause it when I, I go get some stuff. Okay, sorry about that, I just wanted to get some bits and bats to go through the video with you. So, the difference in the two sets. This one feels heavier but really isn't. I don't know why, it gives it that feel that it's more heavy. And I think that's because at the back. So the only difference really in size of these things is the back. So these have these very nice grips. If you look on the back, it's got these grips which go under your fingers under your fingers like that so you've got a better hold of it whereas the jumper obviously doesn't the jumper's got a plastic handle this still comes with a metal handle one of the negatives i think but there is a lot of things that are better about this radio than the jumper but in my opinion there's a lot of things on the jumper that's better than the radio master so one of the big things that i noticed straight out of the box i couldn't fly this straight away i fly the pincher so i have to have basically i fly like this I don't fly like this because I can't get enough. I don't. I can't get enough um, precision, so I fly like this. And because of that, I need to have longer sticks. So normally I just lengthen the sticks out, and that's not a problem. So every radio I buy, I have to lengthen the sticks until I get this one, and then I find I can't actually lengthen the sticks on it. So I'm just trying to get into the box. I put them in the box that they came in. So. These are what comes with it. These are one piece of gimbal sticks. These are what you find on cheap, nasty, tacky toy radios. They don't split, so it's a one piece stick. So if you wind these out to get le better lens, you obviously can't hold them on anything. So they just slip back down or they slide about. In other words, it's impossible to fly with them. That is a bit unforgivable. So I had to buy some more sticks. These are M4, so I didn't have any M4, either of M2 and a half or M3 lying around. These are M4, and the stick ends I've got on here are the same ones that are on a Tyrannis X9D Plus SE. Big mouthful there. These are the ones that come in the SE edition. I loved them when I had my SE, so I bought a set of these. But they're like another, t it was another 10 quid, including delivery to get them, so I could fly with the set. I prefer the gimbals on that one to this one. I've taken both in bits. I find the gimbal quality inside on the build on these, this, not as good as the build on this. If that makes sense. But that's about one of the, the differences on the build quality. Well, this one's obviously got a carbon fibre plate and this one hasn't, but you can buy this now in a load of really nice looking features. One thing I hate about this is these chicken feet of people's room. Why did they make them that style? Why didn't they just have simple buttons like that is on there? But like I said, there is some massive pluses on here. I love the black switch, the black switch screws. Uh, I love the black dials it's got on it. And I like the look of it. It's a very, very nice looking radio. The panels feel a little bit better to me. Stripping it down is different because on a jumper you strip down and you've got one, two, three. You've got them four like normal, which is the same on a jumper. On a jumper you have two more screws, one there and one there. On the Radio Master, you don't, it's held together by the rubbers, basically holding it together in the centre. So there's less screws. So that's one advantage over, to me, 
of uh, is the ease of use getting into it. But I honestly do think that inside this thing, it's not as nicely made as this. A lot of people are going to disagree with me. But getting back to why I bought it, I bought it because I wanted to try Crossfire. So if you buy this ex more expensive version, and don't get me wrong, it is expensive, 220 quid. Well, is it compared to how much radios used to cost? So in the box you get three antennas, the long range ones. You get the three shorter antennas, depending on what kind of build you want to put them onto. You actually get wiring looms to connect them up three of those and then you get the set of springs in here to adjust oh I made it point this out these are supposedly higher tension springs I swapped all the springs on this one because I couldn't get the gimbals this is as much that's as high as I can get these gimbals to tension I can't get any more on them and it's a little bit lighter than what I'd normally like I can fly with it but it's a little bit lighter than what I normally like and then you get a set of receivers and you get three receivers with this and another little board that I don't know what that's for I can't remember what that little board for that you get there but they're the three receivers you get with it so for the money I don't think it's bad you also get a screen protector in here you don't get a lanyard, lanyard like you do with the jumper jumper lanyard garbage anyway but the jumper you do get okay and this comes with, this isn't a case to me, this is not a case, this is just a foam packaging box. So with the case, it'd have a handle on it, it's closed up at somewhere. So it may sound like I'm just having a go at Radio Master, I'm not at all, I think it's a really nice set. What I am saying is, I don't understand these negative videos saying this one's so much better than that one, because I just don't, I honestly don't get it. So I bought this radio and I decided that I sold my jumper to two T16s I had, You've probably seen them on other videos, I sold both of them, so I only left with the DJI radio and the T18. I like to have a backup radio, so just in case one of these goes wrong, because let's be fair, these aren't for Tahaba, they could go wrong, so something could go wrong with them, so I like a backup radio. The idea was to use this as my main radio with the um, Crossfire and have this as my backup. I'm now unsure. Do I just put the Crossfire into here and have this as my backup radio? I can't make my mind up. It feels different to me to use. And uh, that is partially because of this. So I don't know if you can see this very well. So if you look at the sticks, they're virtually straight up. Can you see that? They're virtually straight up. On this one, they're actually sloping in slightly. Probably about five or six degrees. Now that five or six degrees might not seem a lot, but it's making it feel strange to fly because I've been so used to flying with a jumper. And all right, I've not I've been flying with I've been flying with T sixteen, but the gimbals are very much the same and the setup's the same, so it felt very much like home when I started flying with it. This one I've got a little bit of I've only been flying indoors, so the weather's absolutely awful in the UK. So that's the difference. The other thing I've seen on Videos saying that these feel terrible on the T18 and these feel so much better. Can't tell the bloody difference. So, lay it down in the comments if you've got one and you think they feel different. Because I can feel the detent in the centre of there. It's mild. It's very mild in this one as well. I don't feel any difference with them. These feel exactly the same. In fact, these feel a little bit tighter to turn on the jumper. These feel looser. And I've got more of a detent on the jumper actually than this one I don't use any of these and a lot of people that have been reviewing these radios I'll never use any of these either you can get away with obviously setting this up and just using no switches you can just use the 6th position switch and have everything on there you could have this set up as arm angle horizon acro beeper etc etc and have everything on one position one switch you're not going to use half the switches on here you're not going to use the detents or anything like that if you're just flying quads if you're racing quads or doing FPV you're going to use very little of these. The thing that has a massive advantage to me, and it is huge, is this setup. The four buttons on this side make so much difference. So now I have a system and model, and I now have a return error page forward and back, which is huge. On the jumper, you have a return that's here, you have a model here, a system here, a page button, and... Um, telemetry as you do on the bottom of that one the biggest thing was you have to jump all the way around if you want to go through your pages 
and having a model button there feels a little bit strange you do get used to the return there huge difference so let's just boot them back up it's not been a fair comparison because i've realized i've changed the screens on on the tx16 Warning. Both the speakers are set at the same position, they've both got the same volume, it's louder on this one but I think it's clearer on this one. The screens look Normal. very very Normal. similar. So if you look at the screens now, I have changed them so it's probably unfair because I don't have this one set up as that one. So you can see the clarity on the screen on this one and the clarity on clarity of screen on this one. Now, it says that the jumper seeing their blurb that they will have, it will be touchscreen ready. That doesn't mean it's got touchscreen, that means you can put one in it. The Radio Master says it's got touchscreen, but I don't know because no one can try it out at the minute. If you know someone that has tried it out and found a way to test these screens, please let me know in the comments down below so I can watch the video. I'm not saying for one minute it hasn't got a touchscreen. What I'm saying is you're very much in the wild with it. Price-wise, so the price-wise is quite similar on the standard. This is a standard on the standard jumper and the stan minute. standard Radio Master. The budget Radio Master, the light, if you like, equivalent to the T18 light, is cheaper. And there is now a radio out called a Radio King, which looks like a cross between both of these. But God, does it look cheap. It's £80 if you want to buy one. You can buy it from Banggood and various other places. I would avoid it like the plague. I don't know who makes it. I've watched a video this morning saying Jumper makes it. I don't think they do because it's not on their website anywhere. If you go to Jumper's home site, I can't find it. I think it's been made by another company, probably another shoot off from both of these. But it does look cheap. Switches feel great on this one. And everything. Everything's great on this, don't get me wrong, this one has a bigger battery bay, which a lot of people will like. I'm not bothered because I run an 18650s, but it has got a bigger battery bay, as you can see. Still comes with the box, but you can put a big 2S LiPo in there. Or a life or whatever you want to put in. Oh, the other huge advantage is, this one charges from, under these here. So this is also a positive and a negative. So under these here, you have... USB-C socket and also some other sockets that we don't know what they're going to be used for they're for plugging in auxiliaries but I don't know what they're for so here you plug in USB and charge it from there and also it is your SD card the jumper does not have the charge circuit fitted on it why I do not know considering on the T16 it's a mod you buy when you fit this bit in the top it comes and you charge it so doesn't have this underneath and I'm saying it's a passive positive but it doesn't now sit flat because of this little thing. If they just put two little strips of plastic in the mould here and here, it would sit flat. But it's wobbly. Minor. I'm nitpicking. The upshot of all this, what should you buy? Hey, it doesn't matter which one really. They're both great radios. They're both going to do a good job for you. The both compared to the marketplace. Look up by a spec. You can buy a Spectrum. I've noticed they've got another DX6 out. And yet again, another DX6. Uh, it's absolute never going to be as good as these two radios. One, it's got jump. It's not got open checks, which is far more expandable, if you like. Or right, it's very easy to program a spectrum. Yeah, it is. You're going to see videos saying it's the best thing since sliced bread. I do not like. I had a DX6, a DX8, the newer versions, and I also had a DX11 for a while. Did not like any of them. They don't feel as nice as this in your hand. They're certainly not as expandable. And the, far, the DX6, which is the base model, which remember has six channels, is more money than both of these two. Sound like I'm working for Radio Master and Jumper here. I'm not. What I'm saying to you is, but having said that, having said all this, you could have a radio to fly a quad with an arm button, a mode switch, a loss model alarm, and maybe one other for something else, and be perfectly happy. You could just do with four switches and do away with all of this. I'll have TPS Tango too, which I haven't got. I, I do like the Tango too. I won't lie to you. I think it's a really neat looking radio. I prefer this form factor, but what I'm saying is you don't need all these switches. You don't need all this stuff. Touchscreen. What do you need it for? You basically do nothing. 
I have one model and then I set it all up, I set up all my switches, everything I want to do, I'll use that model time and time and time again, I'll just copy it, change the receiver if I need to do and time and time again I copy. That's all I need to do. I don't need to make hundreds of different models. So a touch screen, not really for me. And plus the fact I can't see it because I've got goggles on. I use the screen for setting up. I don't even look at the screen to be fair. I am the quad and off I go. It's nice for setting it up, the big screen. That's all I use it for. So, thanks ever so much for watching. Thanks for making the Witter on. So, upshot is, I like both radios. This is a good value radio if you want to get into Crossfire. I think this is a great package at £220. I got mine from Mantech. But you can get it from various places. It's a couple of quid cheaper if you buy it from Mangood. We all know where I'd rather buy from. But it's up to you. So, thank, once again, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. And don't forget, like, share and subscribe.